I want to continue a message I started a couple of weeks ago on being happy in an unhappy world. And certainly the world is unhappy. All you have to do is uh, watch the news for a little while, or you just have to be around uh, a group of people for a little while that are not Christians, or maybe that are Christians, but uh, they are not active in their faith, they are not attending church, they're not uh, praying at home, they're not reading their Bibles, but they call themselves Christians, and they're unhappy. And I want to talk to you today about uh, being happy in an unhappy world, or being an optimist in the world of pessimists. Now I know those are big words. I had to look them up in the dictionary, okay? <laughs> An optimist is a person that, that looks at things that, and, and believes things are going to come out and turn out okay. Yes. While a, a pessimist uh, is a person that believes that uh, no matter what they do, things are not going to change and, and uh, that life is just full of, of, of bad luck and that all they can do is just roll with the punches. I want to tell you a story in the Bible, Mark chapter 9, about a man that was an optimist. And we'll talk uh, more about uh, the idea of how to overcome uh, problems and how to be happy. But all this ties back into to, uh, what Jesus saw in humanity. You know, Jesus was an optimist. He knew things were going to turn out good. If he knew that things were not going to turn out good, you think he'd have left heaven? You know, if he if he thought, okay, God, you mean you're going to send me down there and they're going to crucify me and they're going to nail me on the cross, they're going to slap me, they're going to spit on me, they're going to humiliate me, my, my family's going to reject me, my friends are going to reject me, you want me to go down there? You think Jesus would have went down there if he wasn't an optimist? He said, God, Father, I believe you can do all things. I believe that you can uh, cause me to rise from uh, that, that grave on the third day like you said. And not only that, but you can give me the power to cause other people, my, my friends, that I'm going to be dying for to be raised again on that last day. Amen. I believe it, Lord. I believe it, Father. Well, I want to tell you about a pessim, I mean, an optimist in, the, in Mark chapter 9. Now this man had a serious problem. He had a child, he had a son, and the, the son was probably at least an adolescent, maybe a young man. When, when, uh, uh, but he had a disease, a a incurable disease, a uh, demonic force that somehow invaded his body and caused him to have all kind of of uh, issues in his life. And if you don't believe in Satan and you don't believe in the, in, the, in the devil, well, just call it some medical term that you can come up with. But the Bible says it was an evil spirit that had indwelt this, this child, from this young man from since he was a child. And uh, the man had tried everything to get help for his son. And if your child had a disease, an incurable disease, you'd do everything in the world to try to get help your child and this man heard that Jesus was going to be at a certain location at a certain time and there was a multitude of people that heard it and that they were there now oftentimes when uh, the word multitude was used in uh, the New Testament sometimes there was uh, at least 5,000 people there sometimes 10,000 people and think of ourselves thinking about Jesus being at the Civic Center today at a certain time, and we knew he was going to be there. We would be there too. And certainly we had heard that he could heal uh, diseases. He could raise, uh, he, could, he could cause the blind to see. He could cause people's marriages to, to, to be healed. He could cause their children to get medical attention that was impossible otherwise. We would all be there. We would tell our friends. And this group was gathered. And here was a man in the middle of this group. He was an optimist. He said, I know there's going to be thousands of people down there, but I am going to get to Jesus. I am going to get my son to Jesus. 
I am going to get him help today. Today is going to be the day when God does something special for me and my child. Amen. So he went down. The Lord had just returned uh, from the Mount of Transfiguration with Peter, James, and John. The rest of the disciples were down there. Uh, they were working with the crowd there with the multitude and they, God had given them, uh, uh, Jesus had given them the ability to heal. They were healing people and everything. And it was a great, great service. And, uh, but there was this, this man, he had brought his, his son to the disciples and says, uh, will, you, will you help my son? And they, they prayed over him and they anointed him and they did all things and nothing happened to the son. Well, the, the man did not get mad and go home because the disciples could not heal this, this child, this young man. He still had one thing left, one, one possibility, and that was that Jesus was going to show up and that he could get his son to Jesus. And so the Lord did show up, and when he did, uh, somehow within that multitude, this man, he found Jesus, and he brought his son to Jesus. And he said to the Lord, Lord, my son has been sick since he was a child. Uh, crazy things happen to him. He foams at the mouth. He throws himself down. If there's a fire someplace, he falls in the fire. Uh, he, 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 he bites himself with his teeth. There's something wrong with my son. And, and I don't know, we've tried everything, Lord. Could you please help my son? If you, if you could do anything, Lord, would you help my son? And Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Yeah. If you can believe. Well, now that is a, that is a big uh, statement. What if, you know, how much? What, if, what, what do you mean? What do you mean by if I can believe? No, the man was an optimist. He looked, at, he looked at things through God's eyes and he says, Lord, if that's what it takes, I believe. I don't care what anybody else around here says or thinks. I don't care what my boss thinks. I don't care what my family members thinks. I don't care what society thinks. If that's what it takes to get my son healed, I believe. Amen. But, he, but Lord, I want to tell you something. I'm just human. I'm weak. And, 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 uh, and if you will, Lord, help my unbelief. Lord, I do believe, but help my unbelief. And Jesus told him, bring your son to me. And uh, they brought the child to Jesus, and the child just fell down in front of Jesus. And Jesus cast that evil spirit out of that little boy, and the first thing he asked him, he said uh, to the father, he said to the father, how long has this been going on? Maybe that's a question the Lord's been talking to you about in your life, about a problem you've had, a sin or a difficulty or a, or a discouraging uh, situation in your life. Jesus is saying to you, how long has this been going on? How long have, are you going to keep on not believing? And so he got to this man. He said, how long has this been? And he says, well, Lord, he's a young man now. But it's been going on since he was a child. If you can do anything for us, Lord, please heal my son. And he did. And the, the, and the, the, the uh, demonic force, the, the situation he had left this young man, and he became normal like all the other children. Now he was able to go to school. Now he was able to play in the neighborhood. Now that father <clears throat> could take that child back home and he could be with his brothers and sisters. Amen. He could take his son home and his mother could hug him. Jesus had compassion. But you know what? It wasn't just the power of that Jesus demonstrated that day, but it was a power of that man showing that he had some optimism in his life. 